All right, coming up, we have stories about passive aggressive gift giving, driver's license drama, unhappy marriages, and friendship drama. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you. This one, of course, is a little bit different because we are doing stories from the beach house today. This one is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the Askinaut for reacting negatively to a gift that was for my toddler? I, 32 male, live in Pennsylvania with my wife, 29 female, and our son, 3 male. I'm a diehard New York sports fan. Knicks, Rangers, Yankees, Giants. I grew up in New York and moved here when I was 25. Oh, Moved to Pennsylvania. Okay. My wife's family are big Philly sports fans. We have some fun with it and we razz each other about it, but nothing serious. My wife's extended family is extremely close, so they're all very involved in each other's stuff and can sometimes overstep. They're great if you clue them into some boundaries, though, and I absolutely love them. However, they joked a few times that they were going to turn my kid into a big Philly sports fan. If that's what the kid wants, great. But if they have, but if I have any say in it, I'd prefer my son to root alongside me, just like I did with my dad. At some point, they made what I thought was a joke before my kid's birthday that they would be getting him all Philadelphia sports stuff. I laughed and told them it would be a waste of money and it would go to Goodwill. I assumed they got the point. Well, on his third birthday, he opened up a personalized Philadelphia Eagles jersey with his name on it. It was from a member of their family who has more money than God, and he had a huge grin on his face and was even recording to see my reaction. If I had a red red flag button, I'd be pressing it now for that part. Not the gift. Somebody filming just to get his reaction, get OP's mm-hmm. reaction. I keep looking back to Candy Thunder, who's sitting right back here. I publicly repeated my claim of giving it away and referred to it as some very nice trash. I didn't yell and I wasn't overly impolite, but I made my feelings clear. A couple of my wife's family members thought that I was rude and I shouldn't have said anything publicly, but I had already let my feelings be known beforehand and didn't think I was doing anything wrong. My wife agrees with me, but thinks that I should apologize for publicly calling out the gift. Am I the astronaut? What do you all think? I think we need to get some candy thunder feedback on this. Coming up to the plate, the one, the only, the incomparably beautiful candy thunder hi everyone so i mean the dad said whenever the kid grows up that like whatever team he feels is his team that that he would respect that and so i feel like the dad is you can't give a gift and film and not expect like someone to get a little bit like offended by the fact that you're like goading them into reacting poorly basically um, like they wanted a reaction and they were filming him to get that reaction. And I feel like he was like, he underreacted in my opinion. It, I mean, kind of an ESH, but he sucks way less than the person who filmed him to get a reaction. Yeah, that's that, that is like, I feel like that's just shitty. That's, that's tipping just the shitty hand. Thing, yeah. if, if he hadn't have been filming to get a reaction right then, I mean, maybe he wasn't though. Maybe OP is oversensitive and he was just filming to mm-hmm. see him open the gift and it wasn't about it being filming his reaction. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, like if you want to like give him Philly stuff and you know New York stuff, then that's totally fine. Like I love, I, I love that. But I mean, don't film someone's reaction because then you just make it shitty and you make it not about the kids. You make yeah. it about mm. this rivalry with the sports thing. And if you had just given the the kid a gift and made it about that gift, then great, fun, everyone's happy. There's still a little rivalry, but now it's like I say that word weird. Rivalry. Rivalry? I thought you um, said it totally fine. Um, but for the him to film is what it bothers yeah, me. Yeah, and yeah. it almost makes the OP not an asshole because he was being filmed. So, of course, he's... And they did it to be shitty. So, I, I actually think NTA. Hmm. Okay. I have so, a different take. I'll okay. explain. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So, Dr. Sweets, we don't know exactly where OP was sitting. And that does have something to do with it. If he was sitting behind his kid or in front of his kid or next to his kid and the filming, like, the kid was in the frame... He can't know that he was trying to film him specifically if he was. Yes, I agree. Then it's malicious. Then he was doing it to be shitty. But I actually have a personal story. Maybe I shouldn't go there, but I'm going there. Um, Actually, uh, the first time that she she met my parents, my parents are huge St. Louis Cardinals fans, huge Cardinals fans, huge. She uh, is a Yankees fan living in Joplin, Missouri. Like you like whatever sports team you like, right? No big deal. 
my folks joked around about getting cardinal stuff for the kids and she got upset enough to like leave to leave the house right then um and that moment divided like created a wedge in that relationship that never recovered it only got worse so it's like i think you can choose you can choose to take it personally but but I don't think you can choose what sports teams your kids are going to like. And if someone else gives the kids sports team stuff, there's nothing stopping OP from giving him uh, from giving him a freaking New York, like a Giants jersey or something. Right. There's nothing to stop him from doing the same. Um, He can just have more stuff and he can be a fan of more than one team. You know who proved that better than anybody? Taylor Swift, huge Philadelphia Eagles fan. Now a huge Chiefs fan. Right. You can you can root for more than one team. It is not an exclusive thing where it's just one team and that's it. I understand dad's distaste for this because he openly said what he said in the beginning. But you know what? They also openly said what they said. He thought they were joking. Who's to say they didn't think he was joking? Like it's a two-way street. I go ESH here. I think everybody sucks here because if that was malicious, the filming, it's ego driven. OP is definitely ego driven right now. Definitely. Where it was an overreaction and, and now like our situation that drove this is going to drive a wedge between their relationship and and now this kid is going to end up spending less time with those members of the family all because of a sports team related gift or comment or this whole thing it's this is a petty thing to damage the relationship with family members relationships with your kids it is a petty thing esh for me Ladies and gentlemen, hello, it's Dusty Thunder once again, coming to you from the Beach House with a Reddit story from the Dusty Thunder subreddit. This one is titled, Am I the Askinoff for Telling My Husband 29 Male to Stop Going Out and Getting Drunk with His Friends Every Night and Leaving Me Alone with the Baby? NTA. Uh Uh-huh. I picked this story because y'all know. Hey guys, I am here posting on behalf of a friend who wanted to remain anonymous and who doesn't have Reddit. The story is as follows. I, 27 female, just had a wonderful baby girl almost five months ago. It's been a wonderful experience, except for some of my husband's, 29 male, behavior throughout the pregnancy and even after the birth. The entire time, he's just been doing whatever he wants. He likes to go out with his friends and drink and come home late. We both get off work, and then I am home alone all night and have to make dinner by myself. He usually gets back very late and extremely drunk. Then he goes to bed at 2 a.m. and complains about being tired and feeling like crap. To be clear, I'm not complaining that I have to take care of the baby because I would love to spend every second of every day with her, but it is tiring. You know, Opie says that now, like one month from now, she's like, okay, I love this kid, but I'm also kind of sick of her. Like parents need breaks. We have had multiple conversations about this. And every time he gets very upset because I am being irritating, quotation marks around that, I know he was raised in a different family environment. My dad would have never left my mom that late at night, but he's not a kid anymore. I just want to say to him that maybe he should go to bed earlier, stop partying and stay home with his family. He's 29. Anyway, so the other day, my husband snuck out of the house at 12.30 a.m. and came back at 5.30 a.m. I saw the timestamps on our cameras. He snuck out. Mm. Let me at this mofo. Mm -hmm. I'll wait till the end, but I've got some words. I woke up at 6.30 a.m. and found him on the ground with his head in the toilet and so drunk that he couldn't even talk. First of all, I'm pissed at whatever friends he was with that let him drive home like that. He drove home. Red flags, red flags, brozo, ask on one, red flags. I had a serious car accident myself that was traumatic enough. I cannot express how drunk driving is not okay. I don't understand why he would do that in the middle of the night and then be mad at me because I'm upset. He told me, like, leave me alone or I'll leave the house. (laughs) Leave the house then, douche canoe. I just told him to leave the house because I need some space. Am I being unreasonable? Am I not handling this correctly? Not sure what I should be doing. There's an update. We'll wait to read it. Um, You are a piece of shit, sir. You are ruining your life. You are ruining your opportunity to be a part of a very critical and special part of not just this baby's life, but of your marriage, of your relationship with your wife. Doing this as a team is 
an experience that will almost break you and make you so much stronger. And you are going to need that for the years to come. It's part of the process that you were selfishly checking out of to go what? To go get pissed drunk with your buddies and what do you do? Like, what do you do with your buddies when you get drunk? That is so much fun. It's worth leaving your wife and baby behind. I pity him. I pity him because he's so dumb. He doesn't know what he's missing out on. And years from now, he's going to look back with massive regret and be like, I wish I had been around more. I wish I hadn't gone out drinking with my friends because I chose to feel like shit instead of filling up my cup by being with my family. It is exhausting. It is tiring. It is stressful, but it is also the most fulfilling thing that you can do. And it may take time to realize that, but it is incredibly fulfilling. This guy is an ASCON one true piece of shit. I, I, I would want to talk to his friends. I would want to know what they're doing while they're out drinking and having fun. He knows it's wrong. He, he snuck out. He snuck out. He knows it's wrong. Ask on one brozo piece of shit. Let's hear what Candy Thunder thinks. Um, I think I, I picked this story because I knew that that our ladies in chat would help this woman out because this was posted to the Dusty Thunder subreddit. But uh, as a mom, like, what is your what is your partner bringing to your life? Because right now your partner is taking from your life. Yep. You're. You're up all night, like you're, you're with the baby, you're doing it all by yourself. So at, at this point, you have to ask yourself, like, what, what is he bringing to your life? Because there's, I'm not seeing a damn thing that he's doing to make your life better. Like, you have no idea where he's at at night. You have no idea what the fuck he's doing. And he's sneaking out of your house. This is not a husband. This is not a partner. This is like shit baggage. This is trash that needs to take itself out. Like, if he doesn't do something about his his drinking, like, at this point, if you're getting this drunk all the time, you're you're in alcoholic territory. Like, are you going to live to see your child start kindergarten? Are you going to live to see your child graduate from high school? Because you're going down a slippery slope and a dangerous path. And if he doesn't course correct, he is he's not going to get to see his child grow up because this much drinking like this often mm -mm, is yeah. too much. Yep. I'm not, I would never stay in a relationship where I had to raise my husband. Like that, that is not, that is not it for me. <laughs> I mean, you <laughs> I gotta don't. raise me a little bit. It's in a loving way. You would never do this oh, shit. No. Uh, so uh, I think we're on Ascon one Brozo right now. Totally. Do you have any additions to that? She's, OP is in TA. Uh, so the update on this, do you want to read it? <laughs> he agreed to go to AA. And then therapy, depending on how that goes. He's going to need therapy. I'm just going to tell you that for free. She seems to be optimistic due to past improvements he made. Um, okay, here's the problem. Right, Elise? I'm in my thirties. The damage has already been done, right? The damage has already been done. Uh, so undoing that damage is going to take a hell of a lot more than therapy. I, yeah. A hell of a lot more than therapy for him. So once he has successful therapy, which is going to take him growing up and showing a shit ton of commitment and responsibility, which mm -hmm. he has not done so far, if that works well and he hits that checkpoint, then it's time for couples therapy and to repair their relationship, right. which is going to be an uphill climb. So the amount of work he's going to have to do now to undo his f ups is going to be so much more taxing than if he had just done it right the first f time. Maybe that's part of um, growing up and getting older and wiser. I I can tell you that if you are in a relationship, a relationship with someone who is an alcoholic, and I would call this guy an alcoholic, mm -hmm. um, it's hard to unsee and it's hard to undo the things that they have done. And the being chosen, like being not chosen over and over again, like, like alcohol is superior to you. Alcohol has been made more important than you. Um, it is a lot harder to come back from a relationship that from in my experience speaking like this has happened to me um and others that i know like uh when you are not it's not him not me um when somebody chooses alcohol over you it's hard to come back from that mm. and yeah some things are unforgivable and and like and you and you know i've forgiven but you don't forget like you don't let that go i mean the win here would obviously be him getting better, doing the work to be forgiven, right. which is going to be an even bigger uphill climb than I was thinking because of what she just said. 
but the win is obviously like this family coming together and growing from this and, and him becoming the father he needs to be, mm-hmm. the man he needs to be, right? That would be the win, but it's on him. It is 100% right. on him now. Ugh, he chose alcohol over his baby. Yeah. So either his friends just have that much pull over him or it's his choice. Every, I mean, it's his choice no mm-hmm. matter what, but but it could be his friends that are just such that terrible of an influence right. that he's got to realize that he's got to cut bait from those relationships. Yeah. No, I get that. If they're allowing him to do it, dude, if I had a friend who was choosing to do that instead of being home with their new baby, I'd be like, hey, are you okay? Because that's dumb. I know this was a, I would assume a Dusty Thunder follower, someone that posted in the subreddit for their friend. Um, Like, was he like this before the baby? Like, did that, you know, like those kinds of things. Or did, was it the baby that triggered something? I don't know. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you. This one from AITA is titled, Am I the Askinaut for Snapping at My Husband in Front of His Family and Revealing That He Hasn't Helped Me Like He Claims? (laughs) Hi everyone, for my whole life, I, 30 female, have had a lot of anxiety when it comes to driving. It has never been too much of a problem, as I live in a city where I can walk wherever I need to go. I've been married to my husband, Stan, 32 male, for three years together for six. Throughout our relationship, he has tried to help me learn how to drive. The problem is Stan is not a very good teacher and gets very impatient and angry every time we try. We go to the parking lot of an abandoned warehouse sometimes. It's huge. Anyway, if I make one small mistake, for example, if I don't check my mirrors for long enough, Stan yells at me. Uh, I would already be nervous at the wheel, but with all the yelling, it would cause me to break down and cry. I have a brother, Paul, 33 male, who I hang out with typically once a week. A few months ago, I was talking to Paul about how I want to learn to drive but I'm very nervous about it. He offered to help teach me when we hung out. Paul's husband, Chris, was also willing to help me out, and they actually made me feel so much more at ease behind the wheel. I thought I was bad at driving, but it turns out I was just anxious. Another factor that made me want to learn, besides feeling like I need to do this, is that is that Stan has told me that he won't have a child with me until I get my license, which I definitely understand. That's one of the weirdest stipulations for having a kid I've ever heard in my entire life. That's, that's like, Two 16-year-olds plan on not having a kid. Yeah, but not until you have your license, right? Because that just, duh. <laughs> okay. I mean, I get it, but but I don't get it. Two weeks ago, on my day off from work, Paul and Chris took me to the DMV, and I finally got my license. I also bought a used car a few days ago from money that I've been saving up for years. I'm so happy that I have support from my brother and his husband. I thought Stan would be mad that I did all of this behind his back, and he was somewhat disappointed that I didn't want his help. I love him so much, but honestly, he wasn't the right teacher for me. Anyway, on Sunday, Stan and I both had off from work, and he told me he had a surprise for me. He took me to his parents' house, where they had a celebration for me. Basically, like a little party congratulating me because I learned how to drive. Halfway through, my mother-in-law was giving a speech about how proud she was of me, but also proud of my husband for all of the support and lessons he was giving me. I could feel the anger rising in my chest. Stan had been telling everyone that he was the one who has been teaching me to drive. I snapped and told everyone, basically, that the few times Stan tried to teach me, I always ended up crying because he would yell at me until he was blue in the face. I said that the only people who helped me and gave me confidence were Paul and Chris, and that, if anything, Stan made things worse for me. Which was true, but now Stan won't talk to me. My mother-in-law, father-in-law, and sister-in-law are on my side. That's shocking. But my two brother-in-laws and a couple of cousins are on Stan's side. I kind of do feel like an asshole, but at the same time, everything I said was true. Am I the asshole? Thoughts here? Lean in and give them candy thunder. I'll take my my right ass cheek back to my chair. Let you lean in. We'll give some feedback here. Um, Can we get some feedback? A little bit more. uh, A bit more. You know, I was listening to this story. Like, I haven't heard any of these except for that other, the second one that I picked. But um, I'm teaching Ava how to drive. I knew you were thinking this. And I'm like... I knew it. It is so stressful. And I do feel like I... Like I yell. Like I get like... I get nervous and I and I yell. So I... One, just out of the way, I am going to make a mental note. Try to be better... A better teacher to her. Because when she said she can drive, she was just anxious. And I'm like, maybe I'm making Ava 
more anxious than necessary. Um, so one, I feel extremely guilty and I'm glad that maybe Tony put this in here for a reason, y'all. Maybe he did that. I don't know. But um, I, uh, it's so hard. It is so like, I don't even know how you teach someone to drive. I'm like, you just do it. You just drive. But no, I think, um, I think that her husband should not have been taking credit for something he did not do and not. I don't think that I learn well from Dustin like I do, but I don't. Um, he doesn't like to teach, uh, so I don't like him teaching me to do stuff. He does feel like uh, like it puts me it puts my defenses up. So I understand why she couldn't learn from her husband, and that's totally okay. But I feel like her husband taking for credit for something he didn't do because he was embarrassed because he couldn't teach her yeah. is bullshit. Yeah, yeah. So to make the celebration about him. For something that she ended up having to do on her own is bullshit. Yeah. Now here, here's somebody said, "Why isn't Dusty doing any teaching?" Um, oh, he he is. He's he is. So yes, I have to have. Let me let me just disclaim this. I am a shit teacher. I am a terrible teacher. I don't care what it is. I am a terrible teacher because when I when I execute, I execute at nine thousand miles per hour. Sorry, I was trying no, to keep good. you in the shot. Um, I execute at my speed, which has to be the speed that it is for me to get the amount of shit done that I get done. Uh, and it is very much a like, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And it's really hard for me to understand or to remember the early parts of the process. It's hard for me to slow down to teach someone. That's the problem. Agreed. Yes. It is really hard for me yes, to like agreed. force myself to slow down and be like, okay, here's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have figured out how to make it work for me and to make it work for the kids. If I have a very intentional, structured method, um, I can I can stick to my parameters that I enforce on myself and make sure that I'm not biting off more than we can chew together as a team, like teacher and student. Um, so we've done some, Ava and I have done some, some focused skills building lessons, like in parking lots. So we'll be like, okay, today we're going to work on turning gracefully. Right. Today we're going to work on braking gracefully. Today we're going to work on pulling into uh, like how you park. And we're going to park <laughs> with no cars around and we're going to get out and see where you are between the lines. And we're going to do some skills building. And she's been handling the practical side of things. If I were handling the practical driving to target side of things, I would lose my shit every time. Like, right. it's just, it's not, that's not what I would excel at teaching. And I do think there is, right. there is a, a matter of students, different students learn from different teachers better. That's just the bottom line. Her husband though, that's not what this is about. This is about him taking credit for something that he wasn't involved in to save face with mm -hmm. his family because he, he had talked about it before. Yeah. Okay. It's he had to be embarrassed that yeah. he wasn't the one that could help her learn. But also like, I mean, he seemed, I don't know, maybe it was his family who threw the party and like was proud of her or did he do that? I don't know. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with a follower submitted story for you. Not from Reddit, from a follower. Title of this one is, Am I the Askinaut for having thoughts about leaving my husband after 16 years? I, female 38, have been in a common law relationship with my male husband for around 16 years now. We have had our share of good and bad times throughout this time. We have a 14-year-old together. I work two jobs, one 12-hour overnight job and one day shift jobs on my days off. Also, while driving him to and from work, our child to and from school cooking dinner. Sometimes I don't get to eat before I work as there's no time for me to after picking her up from school. I do the grocery shopping, go to the laundromat to do laundry as we don't have a washer and dryer, buy him smoke and gas for our car, take out the garbage and wash the dishes. He calls out of work two, th two to three times per week with some excuse, then gets mad at me when we have no money left after having to pay all of our expenses. I've tried to tell him in the past that his missing so much work every week really puts a strain on our finances. There are times when I only have 10 cents in my account and still need to get gas to, to get to work for the week. He then gets mad at me that I'm spending my money foolishly. Meanwhile, I can't do that because I need to have money for his needs. While I'm spending my money on bills, car payments, which are under his name, car insurance, which is also under his name. He yells at me if the house isn't spotless, and when I tell him I'm exhausted, he says, well, then don't work two jobs. Every birthday, Father's Day, and Christmas, I always make sure to get him gifts, a cake, and a card. I even planned a birthday party for his 40th birthday. No, don't tell me she's getting ready to say what she's getting ready to say. Why would she set this up unless she's getting ready to say that she doesn't get anything? 
When it comes to my birthday, Mother's Day, and Christmas, I get arguments. I don't get any acknowledgement like happy birthday. I get, what are you making for dinner? If I want to spend money on myself for my birthday, it's followed with, well, we can't afford it. I'm going to need smokes next week. I don't get gifts, cake, or anything. He doesn't even take our daughter out to help us pick out something for me. I feel like an asshole for thinking about wanting to throw in the towel, but I honestly don't know what to do anymore. If I bring it up, he will automatically assume I'm... I'm talking or sleeping with other men or that I've been talking about him to people I work with and that they are feeding thoughts into my head. Am I the astronaut? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to hand it over to Candy Thunder on here because she is heated up about this one. Let's go. I'll move my butt cheek. (laughs) What is she doing? Why is she with this guy? I don't. Like, what? I don't know. One, you're teaching your daughter what to deserve in a relationship, and that's basically just complete abuse. Two, what are you doing in this relationship? Like, what what the f*** are you getting out of it? Because at this point, you're just doing it all and working two jobs. Um, And you're working two jobs to support his, what, his smoking habit and the gas for his car? Like, there are worse things than being single. Like, throw the man away. Take your daughter, use the money that you save from buying his cigarettes to buy a washer and dryer Mm. and just get away from this man because the washer and dryer would give you more than what this man is giving you. That's not a (laughs) real. Y'all know what I mean. (laughs) Whoa. But may still be true on that front, too. Um, So he's worse than another child because he's he's not just someone that she's responsible for that she has to provide for and care for because it's her child. Like he's zero is greater than negative one. That's the bottom line. Zero is greater than negative one. And this doesn't just go for your relationship with him. This goes for the family because obviously he doesn't give a single shit about his kid either, or he wouldn't be doing the the shit that he's doing. He cannot put a hundred percent of his responsibilities on you on top of your hundred percent of responsibilities. That is entirely unfair, unfair. Your back is breaking at this point from carrying him through life. Hey, beer today, everybody. So I, this, this, all the stories, all the guys are assholes. Why are the husbands not stepping up and being husbands? Be a partner because what's going uh, on? Because I think in, in those relationships, people don't write stories into Reddit. Oh, yeah, that's right. They just fix it and do it correctly. And we read them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we read them. We read them. Hi, Boogie. Uh, I think they're both 29 and 30. I think that were the ages. So 30 is 100%. Old enough to know better. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Old enough to know better. Bye, sweet pickle. Zero is greater than negative one. I think that's 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 the only thing I could say. Yeah. Zero. The, he's obviously an ask on one. He's a brozo. He's a lot of things. But this is not him. This is not for lack of capability. This is intentional. You are being taken advantage of, OP. And is OP here? Have we heard anybody? Mm-mm. Has anybody in chat seen no. OP? This is, uh, again, I, don't, I just don't, I don't, like, how did you write this out and then still and not, not see validate. that, yeah. like, you are, you could do so much better just being by yourself. And I hate, I hate when people feel like they have to stay in a relationship. And this is men and women, like. You have to stay in a relationship because you put time and effort into that relationship. The hell you do. Right. Like you can walk away from that relationship. If you are not getting what you need out of it, then be by yourself or okay. see what's out there. It is hard, but at the end of the day, is it so hard that this is what you want to show to your child that this is how you live life? Because I would not want to show that to no. my child. I wouldn't want my, and a 14 year old is going to see that and be like, I don't. Like at that point, they're just going to repeat what you've already done. And I feel like if you're going to do something that's hard and you have a child, do that for your child. Yeah. It's and much easier to do it for them than it is to do it for yourself. That's yeah. And that's much what I'm easier. saying. Thank you. Um, Dr. Sweet says, I just told a client today that people who control you don't want you to know you have options. And that makes perfect sense. <laughs> Hey, Dusty Thunder here, and I wanted to thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed that content, and if you did, please make sure to like, subscribe, and most importantly, share.
Also, you can find swag and so much more at dusty-thunder.com and you'll find even more content on all of our platforms. We're on TikTok, YouTube. We now have an official Facebook page that we'll be posting stories to as well. We have podcasts on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and so much more. You can see all of our content platforms on Linktree, which is linked in my bio. Engage with us wherever you're enjoying content and do your best to avoid the Askonauts today. Thanks again.